flip flops. Yeah, got my work boots on. So you know what that means. We're gonna be working on this Crew Cab Thunderbird 67 model. If you watched the older video, you saw us take our Ford 2N tractor that we got run after 30 years and we tried to pull these out of the junkyard with it and it didn't really work but we used the rollback instead so they're here now and if you watch that video you saw a walk around of it but it's got a 390 probably got a c6 Ford 9 inch uh we're gonna try to get it run in this video maybe it'll work maybe it won't i'll give you a quick walk around if you didn't watch the last video this thing's really dirty on the engine, so I'm going to break tradition and I'm going to clean up, up the engine bay before we start on this. It uh, looks like we had some squirrel action there, maybe. Don't know. The interior, man, I wish that, that all the seats were in the, as good a shape as this one, but uh, they're not. Because some animal lived in here. This was its summer home. Maybe a winter home. You guys told me that this was to get airflow through the car. I went through that cow and out this one, I guess. It's pretty cool. But wish I had four hope caps. We definitely got ignition issues. So that's great. Look at this funny little block off area. I wonder why they didn't just make that a window. Definitely got brake issues. And uh, this was the uh, main front door entrance to the car for whatever animal lived in this for a while. Got our carb kit ready to go here because i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to do that i love this interior though it's just so futuristic looking for the time love love the grill love the tail lights so cool hideaway headlights let's uh pull this thing out of this spot and try to clean it up might as well just get this stuff out of here because uh, i don't think the pressure washer is gonna help us with that man the nut count we need to count these guys huh 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 53. I think 53 is all I can find. Ralphie wants to try his hand at a pressure washer. He never has got to use it while it's running. So don't spray the distributor. You'll get a bunch of water in it. And try not to get it inside the carburetor in, underneath that or down in that hole right there, okay? I'm going to put some degreaser on it just to help this pressure washer out. I just can't get a car with good casings. They always go flat on me. Maybe we can see to move it.
Watch your foot, Tosh. You want us to push? I saw this on Looney Tunes. Heavens to Betsy, if that wasn't a fiasco. Look like we were in a Dr. Dre video. I'm gonna go ahead and soak everything on this motor with PB Blaster like I normally do. Oh, got my finger with that one. Hold on. And then uh, that way, when I come back out here to Mari, everything will be loosened up and ready to go. There we go. Now you just let it soak. Give it some time. Be patient. Now we didn't get any paperwork with this car yet. He's still looking for the title. It don't have a tag. I didn't see any paperwork in the car. So we just got to carbon date this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 27 years, that's how long this one's been sitting. This is kind of cool, I just noticed it. Campbell, Plymouth Dodge Jeep Incorporated, Bristol, Tennessee. Any of you guys remember that dealership? Uh, I don't live close enough to Bristol to know that one. But I love these old dealership stickers. Well, it's been a couple days. We've let this thing marinate. I actually just put a second coat of PB Blaster on it. First thing I'm gonna do though is pull the spark plugs out, see what that looks like, and put some oil down in the cylinders in case they're rusted up since they've been sitting forever. Why do you like coming to the shop so much, huh? You and your wife. You eat tools? You better not eat that plastic. Hey, you hear me? You can't eat electrical wires. Quit. <laughs> that plug right there was stuck. I had to get my old radiator pipe to get that one. I'm actually using some Marvel Mystery Oil this time. Some of you uh, viewers told me I should probably use the Marvel instead of transmission fluid. Got in my old paint gun cleaner. Not sure how good you can see that, but there is rust on the cylinder walls that's visible down through the spark plug hole. Uh, this back spark plug was totally loose. And it's covered with junk. Hmm. There you go. Free that motor up for me. I'm gonna go ahead and check the transmission fluid level while we're right here at the dipstick. I know you're supposed to do this with it running. I'm just seeing if there's any in it. Calm down. Yeah, it's got some in it. Doesn't smell burnt either. That's good. Here's my spark plugs. It looks like the front cylinder on the passenger side has some rust on the plug and the back two on the driver's side have some rust on them. I would assume that's the valves that are probably open and been open for years and years and years. So that's what I would guess. Ooh. Look, I'm gonna fill in this bad spot here. We did get enough cars running. We won't need a ramp anymore. Yeah, we're just gonna disconnect this battery right here. I'm just not used to buying a car that has a battery in it. It's weird yeah, for me, it, Ralphie. Hey. Well, at least the carburetor and linkage is not stuck, huh? That's pretty good. Let's check the engine oil real quick. Well, it is way over full. I don't think I've ever seen that sticker before. Like I said, I'm not really old poor guy though oh yeah it dries a bone like i figured where does it go does it evaporate tell me it must this thing has one heck of a radiator and it is bone dry so maybe somebody's worried about it freeze busting and they drained it maybe so we definitely gotta fill this thing up with some water what's that what do you think is it running rich or lean okay we're taking the points off here Let's see what these fellers look like here. Mm, not the best, huh? I just remembered I hadn't sprayed the brakes back here. And you know we gotta do some brake work, so we go ahead and spray all this stuff back here. You let it loosen up while I'm working on the front. Well, I guess you won, huh? I'm gonna go ahead and take this big fan off just so I can get access to that crank pulley. Try to turn this motor over. We'll put the fan back on after we get running. 
That's not good. Well. Wow. Wow. This motor is maybe locked up. That motor's turning now. That's weird. I'm gonna set the points right there while the uh, points are up on the high point of the cam. So you wanna get the arm on your point, the plastic arm, up on the high point of this cam lobe on the distributor. And then you're gonna wanna set this at 17 thousandths, the gap in between here. The way to set that is loosen this flat screwdriver thing here, and then you can get your screwdriver in there and pry it in or out to get it where you want it and then lock this back down when you're done. Okay, just drag on there, have a little bit of resistance when you're up on the lobe. Lock it down. I forgot to order a rotor button. We're gonna reuse this guy and put our new cap on here. All right, I'm gonna hook a battery up to this thing for probably the first time in 30 years. Hopefully we don't let any smoke out. What was that? Yeah, I smell the Marvel Mystery oil. It was puffing a little bit there, wasn't it? At least it spun over. I'm just excited this thing actually spun over. I mean, it was so hard for me to turn over and the starter just kicked it right over, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot better. Man, I should have built this building wider, huh? 24 feet ain't enough for these big boats. Very black, for sure. Got a little bit of clumps coming out there for a second. I don't think it's nothing to really worry about. What brand is this? PR1 Pure Later, okay. Well, that's good enough, I guess. I don't know if they're any good or not. You guys keep telling me Use wicks only, so that's what I've been doing. Mmm, yummy. Well, good news. The threads are stripped out off the oil pan, so this won't even tighten back up. I'm gonna actually put the marble in here because it, you know how long it takes oil to get through the filter into the both halves of the filter, so I'm gonna put this in there because I thought it might go through the filter quicker and actually get a better feel on this. Yeah, that actually worked a lot better. But once you're full, you're full. It doesn't drain down like oil usually does. So just got to watch it when you get almost full. So I just wrapped some Teflon tape around it and tightened it up as much as I could. So this is definitely going to be an issue later. We got our synthetic diesel oil here. 540. You know what I do. This stuff I got from Rule King again because it's cheaper. I don't know if it's better, but it's definitely cheaper. <laughs> it's definitely going to be loud on the old passenger side bank because the uh, muffler's totally disconnected completely from it. Well, I think I figured out where our antifreeze went to. I've never seen a hose rot like that where it was just literally gone. Well, believe it or not, I had a belt here that fit it that came with this house when we bought it. This was sitting in the barn, and it's a Kubota tractor belt. It's like a Mitsubishi or something's what it says on it. So if you got a old Kubota belt laying around that size, hey, it'll fit your 67 crew cap Thunderbird. I guess I'm gonna see what the brake pedal feels like. Well, feels like a brick. Okay. Wow, four piston, like the 67 Continental we've got is. That's crazy. Only problem is these are about impossible to find. Man, I can't believe that tire airs up. How does that tire hold any air at all? Look at this. It still airs up. That's crazy. Did any guys back in the day use these uh, as an upgrade for a, you know, a smaller car? Because this seems like it would be a great brake upgrade for like a, you know, some sort of Falcon or Fairlane or something. I don't know. Tell me. Anybody ever done that? Is that possible? Well, everything's possible.
Look how much stuff is coming out of this. It is full of rust. I don't know how hard this thing's gonna be to get off. I got mad at the other side after like an hour. So I wanna try to get this one off. It's fighting me too. See if I can heat the drum up around the center. It seems to be stuck around the center. Asbestos. Well, we still got shoes. The pins that hold it in are good. Looks like our cables and our springs are good. So we'll probably just change this wheel cylinder out. And uh, that's probably it for now on this one. Oh, it's just bending that cry bar. What are you doing? You decide to come join us? Huh? Nothing stops you, right? Fences? I don't like WD-40 either. PB Blaster's the way to go. It's just what I had, okay? No! Quit! Quit! No! Make you sick. I gotta replace this uh, master cylinder too because it's jammed up. And, uh, you know, it may seem like I'm jumping around. Well, it's, it's just the ADD. That's all. Believe it or not, these two lines actually came loose. Can't believe it. Usually they really fight me or they break the line off. Like, if you look in some of my other videos, that's what usually happens. The problem is with all this is I don't have front brake calipers or front hoses. That's going to be a problem, I'm afraid. We'll see how it goes. Well, it looks like we actually got the right part from Wrong Auto this time. Better not say that before I bolt it up, huh? Well, this just went together too easy. Something's wrong here. This thing is not wanting to come out, so I'm gonna heat this line up and try to get it loose that way. So the heat helped. That line was about to snap when I turned the nut and I heated it up some more and now it spun the nut, no problem. So taking these half inch bolts out and uh, we'll have this wheel cylinder on. There we go. Wheel cylinder is always rusted up. If you're froggy, you can rebuild these things. A lot of times these are like really cheap, so I don't I don't spend the time to rebuild them. Uh, also, your brake hoses, the insides of them swell up, and then sometimes you'll get fluid through them, and then it'll lock your brakes up and it won't let them back. So always need to replace the hoses, master cylinder, wheel cylinders, uh, rebuild or replace the calipers. You're usually going to have to do all this if it's been sitting 20, 30 years. Also, your fuel system, your fuel tank's going to be terrible, sending unit, um, your fuel pump, carburetor, all that stuff's going to be bad usually. The more you know. Oh, it makes it so easy. Trying to take this rear brake line loose. It's stuck too, of course. I wish I would have got it on video, but this just blowed up in my face. Somehow the heat generated from the torch built pressure in this line, and it's blew. I mean, it sounded like a gun went off right in my face. It blew rust all over me. Well, it finally broke loose with some heat, and good thing that line blew up my face. That way I was able to get a 5 8 box end wrench on this end to hold it because it was wanting to spin. Well, I got one of them loose. This one's wanting to twist the line off, so I'm going to heat it some more, see if that'll help. I burnt my hand real nice. That was cool. I'm going to go ahead and check the rear differential. Man, this thing has a huge plug. It's like the tractor's oil drain plug. Yeah, they're always low. Nobody checks this. So I got the line on there. I want to go ahead and leave the metal line loose and try to flush the brake fluid out through it until it runs clean and then hook it up because I'm sure these metal lines have got to be nasty. Super nasty, like third shift at the Waffle House nasty. I took the plug out down here and the adjuster, I took my little adjuster tool and it seems to be stuck, so... I sprayed some oil on it, which probably ruined it, all the brake pad surface. And I looked up here and these pins are not even connected anymore, so I probably broke them loose. I heard some parts falling out earlier. Surely we'll get this drum off at some point in this video. I've literally been working on this for like four hours and I'm done with it. So stuck. 
I guess the brake pads were just like ultra glued to this thing. Of course, the pins broke, the springs broke, the retainers broke. Our drums are pretty rusted up and coated with oil. I guess this right here is what's got us. I don't know. Wow. Finally got a free wheel now. All right, I got all that hooked up now. Now we just got to work on this brake over here. I just remembered I had a couple nine inches that had been sitting in cow poop for years out here. So I'm going to see if the springs and the retainers are good on these. Maybe not. Well, it's a good thing I kept these. They're in terrible shape, but it's better than what I had, right? So we just wire brush it. Probably needs turned. Probably needs replaced. Got a big hunk out of it right here where I beat it with a hammer. But we finally got a wheel that turns. That was a lot of work. Oh, we're getting fluid. Okay. Somebody put a rubber hose over the brake line trying to fix it. Okay, I've got to remake the rear brake line. Wonderful news. So this line goes in the back of the proportioning valve here. And uh, it was more stuck than my old power wagon. So I had to uh, heat it up with a torch and it, we just finally got it broke loose here. Took a tractor to get the power wagon out back in the day. So I stole the nut off the old line because it's different than what I have as far as a new one. We're gonna crimp this, route it on the car, put a new nut on the back, and maybe, just maybe, we'll have some brakes. We finally got that in there. I just bent that up like a kindergartner. All the way down through there. Hold it. Okay, I think we're just getting fluid now. Maybe we're good. Well, I've been saving these ever since I had my Ranger about 10 years ago. And I finally got a use for them. Dug them out of the poop in the barn. Got my hand all in it on accident, so that's good. At least these won't go flat. These got a little bit better casings on them. Guys, you may not think I'm all about recycling, but I am. Like when you have a drain plug that leaks, you don't just let it leak out on the ground. You put it in this pan right here. At the end of the day, when you're going home from work, you just pour it right back in there. See, it's recycling. Oh, man. First time this thing's rolled this easy in years, probably. I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor off here and clean it out. I think... I think that's the last thing I'm gonna to have to do before we try to start this thing. Let loose. Let this fuel line come loose. Well, there we go. I don't know what hit the ground. Mm-hmm. Looks good. It actually doesn't look terrible down in there. We've seen some other ones in here that look quite a bit worse, but it's really not that awful. I love that it's a four barrel. I just opened the four barrel on this thing and that's everything that fell out on the table. Man, that's a lot of junk. I'm glad I didn't get that down the motor. Okay. Wait, what is that? Is it like water? I don't know. It's pretty dirty down in the bottom of the bowl, which it usually is. Of course, the uh, needle and seat was stuck. Look, it's got a little piston and rod in there, huh? Look at that little guy. Here's your accelerator pump. If those rot right there, it won't run worth a flip. So, Ralphie, this is the float, and this is upside down, but when it fills up with fuel, the float pushes on the needle, which pushes against the seat and stops fuel from coming into the carburetor. Once it gets to that certain level, it fills this bowl up. And then these jets are what determines how much fuel the engine gets. The bigger the jet, the more fuel it gets. And on this end, this is your choke flap, which chokes the engine down when it's cold weather, cold starting, to help it run until it gets warmed up. These should be the aisle mixture screws. You want to count the turns on these. You want to turn them all the way in and count how many turns they were from all the way in. These were a turn and a half. 
I took a brush and kind of brushed in the bottom of this bowl. You can see, pretty brown. We got our new accelerator pump diaphragm on there. And uh, needle and seat and float in there. You gotta get your float at the right level. Usually the float needs to be like level when the, the bowl's full. But uh, man, imagine the engineering it took to design something like this. You want to spray down through every single passage you can find that might have fuel through it because a little bit of dirt in this thing will not run. We got about 10 things we got to line up at the same time to get this thing to drop together. I'm also not sure what this monkey holding assembly is right here to cover that hole up. Tell me, I don't know. Well, we put most of the kit in it. We didn't take the base plate off. Kind of looks dirty on the outside, but it's clean on the inside. Some people are that way. But check out how dirty I am. This is what 14 hours straight of working on this darn car looks like. So I got some spam and RC cola waiting on me in the house. So we'll flip this on the car tomorrow. Check out all the dirt that came out of that carburetor. Which a lot of it was on the outside, but there was a lot on the, the inside too. Well, I got a belly full of spam now. And I got some clean clothes on. Let's get this carburetor on here, huh? Hmm, nothing like spam. Well, I went ahead and I took the factory fuel filter off right here and just put a, it's an eighth inch prop thread fitting and I just put a 5 sixteenths barb on it. And then we put this janky fuel filter here so we can see what it looks like. So we got our two cycle gas here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the carburetor bowl and see, uh, we can fire this thing off i'm gonna give her some fuel down in there too to run off of i've never tried the key before it's way down here look at this cool spot okay i don't see any lights coming on the dash <laughs> this hog leg ground cable lord looks like one of them power lines i don't know where i got it looks like it's off some diesel truck or something i'm gonna guess and say that's gonna make this thing crank a little faster this time <laughs> fuel down through there let's see We got a locked up water pump that is why the belt was squealing and that is why it broke the belt when i first cranked it over so we're going to take both belts back off this thing and start it that way for just a second i guess until we get a water pump all right so we took the water pump pulley off took both belts off we're going to crank it again that's probably why this thing was cranking so slow is that right there so and this you know if i had to guess this may be why this engine you know why this car got parked is the water pump went out Sounds better. Looks like the fuel pump's starting to work. I'm gonna give it some more in the bowl here. And we'll try it again. We're gonna put our no chuck pliers in there and start it.
the way up to H. I don't know if that means anything or not. We can't run this thing very long until we get that water pump on. Looks like our old fuel pump's working. Got some blue gas in there. It's burning off all my PB blaster and marble mystery oil and everything else. Man, this thing is sounding good though, huh? It don't sound bad at all. I love it. There's no telling how long it's been since this thing's ran. I mean, uh, we have no idea, but it's probably been 20, 30 years at least since this thing has ran. I have to believe that water pump went out and somebody just gave up on the old crew cab model and said, we're going to get a newer one and parked it. That's what happens to these things. Sometimes it's something simple. Motor sounds good. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the radiator out of the way since uh, there's a bazillion bolts I got to take out here. And uh, that'll give me a lot more room to work, I think. This thing has a beast of a radiator. How big those tanks are, huh? Maybe I got all them crazy Ford bolts out. Yeah, it looks like I did. Everything was cast iron back then, wasn't it? Crazy how much weight you can take off these motors if you do aluminum parts. Here's what it looks like behind there. So I guess the fuel pump on these FEs drive off the timing cover. I really never have messed with them that much. To know but probably be a good time to change that fuel pump while all this was off i've decided i'm definitely going to change this fuel pump i know it's working but you know those diaphragms they get dry rotted it may go out any moment i'd really kick myself already having all this stuff out of the way not change it so here's our uh, fuel pump from wrong auto here's our bolts they won't even go through there so i guess i'm gonna have to drill the holes out in the pump and the gasket to even make it work. Well, hopefully I didn't cause myself a new issue. Hopefully this wrong auto pump works and uh, we'll be okay. While I'm waiting to get the water pump I ordered, I'm going to go ahead and fix this exhaust while uh, we're waiting. Okay, well, fix the exhaust. At least that's out of the way. Man, that, this thing must have been really quiet back in the day because it has, or had, four mufflers on it. Who would want to quiet down a 390 like that? That's just a sin. Look at this pretty boy, huh? This is our bull. I don't think I've ever showed you guys that. Kind of looks like Jar Jar Binks, huh? He's nice. He's a nice boy. Huh? You're nice, aren't you? You're a little bigger than Rocky is. What are you doing, Rocky? Does that feel good to scratch your head? Don't break it. We got our belts on there and we got our new lower radiator hose. Finally got that guy. They had to order it as well. So we're going to set the radiator down in here now, hook the transmission lines up and maybe drive this thing. What do you think? Ralphie says he can pour the water in there. We're going to find out. Okay. <laughs> You're supposed to get it in the radiator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> stop 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 <laughs> this ain't working all right i gave him a lesson or two let's see he figures it out slow slower took almost four gallons to fill this bad boy up but uh it would be better to have the fan shroud on especially in town that really helps cooling so uh maybe we can get a new fan shroud for it let's see if this thing will drive 
I can't wait. This took me a while to get here. Well, got some more recycling to do. I used to do this with a Honda Civic I drove to work. It leaked about a quart out while I was at work and I just pour it right back in every evening out of my Tupperware dish. I'm gonna go ahead and install the gas tank in this car. We gotta have a fuel tank. All right, we got that installed. Look at this Lucas stop slip transmission additive. You know, I like it. I don't have any proof that it works, but I just like using it. We leaked some of this uh, transmission fluid out when we did the radiator, so it probably needs a little bit. She's smoking some stuff off. It's hard to keep it running. It doesn't, it's not happy at idle. I gotta do some carburetor adjusting and figure out what it wants. A wiper's moved, which I believe they run off of uh, the power steering hydraulic pressure. I have a hint that it has too much ignition timing in it by the way it's starting so slow. So we may have to back the timing off a little bit, but we have basically no brakes. You might have noticed that I only bled the rear brakes because can't find the front calipers or hoses right now. So trying to just run off rear brakes and there is not nothing there really all right well we got our door fixed i can't see a thing so i probably need to clean this off a little bit i don't know what that is yeah it's awesome it's a little low on water i don't know what's in that but it's not pretty
hard and it still don't do nothing. Just gotta throw it in neutral. That's what neutral's for, slowing down. just got a hog leg, son. I'm telling you, you got to know how to drive a fast car. junk came out from underneath this car while we were working on that in here look at that it's crazy there's so much rust and mud well that was pretty fun we basically have zero brakes even though we did all the stuff new to the rear and the master cylinder i don't know why we don't have better brakes in the rear but uh we don't so probably going to try to get front calipers for it and hoses Maybe see if we can get a booster for it. I hadn't been able to find it at all. But, man, I love the sound of it with the junky small pipes on a big block. It just sounds hilarious. But uh, transmission seems to be working. I mean, uh, it's taking gear fine. I didn't hear any weird, crazy noises. But what about that big plume of smoke it put out? Black rust smoke, huh? We're going to make another video with this. We're going to clean it out. I've about polished that seat with my butt, though uh we're gonna get it cleaned out though and cleaned up and uh there'll be more to come from this car maybe we can get us some new casings for this thing huh that'd be nice maybe a set of hubcaps get the door to actually shut so the kids don't fly out the back that'd be cool too but uh yeah check it out i got other videos getting all kinds of stuff running drag racing builds i've done uh ralphie's in a lot of them right ralphie so there'll be more to come I appreciate all the views lately, guys. Rocky, tell them bye. See you later. Follow us on Instagram, SleeperDude88. Uh, Facebook at SleeperDude. We got a second channel, SleeperDude2. Check it all out. There's all kinds of stuff out there.